Hey, thank you so much for jumping on here to join me today for this week's video. I'm so glad you're on here joining me. I wanna encourage you to subscribe and hit the button below so that you can follow along and get more content like this. I also wanna encourage you to like and comment as this video goes along because I wanna hear from you. And lastly, if this video blesses you, if it encourages you, if it strengthens you, would you share it with somebody else so that they could be blessed by this as well? Thank you so much, I really appreciate that. Well, hey, today I wanna to talk to you about the revelation, the river, crystal river of revelation, of beauty, of glory, of pleasure that flows from Jesus, flows from Him. This passage right here in Revelation 22 verse one says that this is John, he's John the Revelator. He is the one that has the revelation of Jesus. He wrote the book of Revelation. He's known as the disciple whom Jesus loved. He's walking in an intimacy, in a realm of intimacy that's unlocking wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus. And he says this, in, in his encounter, his ecstatic encounter with Jesus, in Revelation 22 verse one, he says that an angel showed me the river of water of life, bright as a crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. This says, so this is powerful. This says that there's a river. It's the same, it's Ezekiel's river. It's the river where wherever it goes, there's trees lined up alongside of it where the leaves are for the healing of the nations. It's like Psalm 1 with this river planted deep by the river that's yielded its fruit in and out of season. Or as another passage says, you make us feast on the abundance of your house and drink from the river of your delights, the river of your pleasures. Or as another passage says, the river of God is full of water. There's a river of God that, or a stream who makes glad the city of God. There's a stream and a river. This is that river. It's the crystal river of the spirit of God, the sevenfold spirit of God. And this says that it flows from the throne and of the lamb. You could picture it like this as I throw up this picture right here. This would be a great depiction of what I'm trying to describe here. There's a throne. There's a lamb is the centerpiece of heaven, the throne room with the father and the lamb, the slain, wonderful, worthy, beautiful lamb of God is the centerpiece of all the activity of heaven. And it says that from the throne and the lamb, there flows a crystal river. And wherever this river goes, there's healing, there's deliverance, there's freedom, there's salvation, there's eternal pleasures and feasts of the abundance of his house, feasting on the bread of revelation, feasting on the abundance of the house of God, feasting upon his glory. As it says in another passage in Revelation that he, Jesus would show or would give those that overcome with victory, he would give them hidden manna. So a part of this river flowing is it's from it flows revelation and wisdom of Jesus, broken bread and hidden manna, unpacked revelation in the scriptures about Jesus, healing in, uh, in all manner of ailment, every manifestation of the healing power of God, healing flowing to the nations, deliverance from demonic oppression, all the manifestations, the beautiful, wonderful manifestations of the spirit, all the beautiful, wonderful fruits of the spirit of God are flowing in this river. And I had this encounter once where I was in a time of prayer and suddenly I found myself floating down the river of God and Jesus was floating next to me and he said, reach in and drink. And I reached in and I lapped up water and I began to drink from the river of God. And as I would float along, there were angels all around and these trees were uh, weighed down with massive fruit and beautiful glowing gold leaves. And they were sparkling and they were weighing down over the river. And he said, reach up and take. And I reached up and grabbed a hold of the fruit and began to eat. And all this peace and all this euphoric pleasure and joy began to wash over me in the presence of God as I feasted upon the abundance of his house. Look, I want to encourage you. How, where does this river flow? It flows from the throne and of the Lamb. So my question is, if Jesus is the centerpiece, if the throne room that in the Jesus is the centerpiece of all activity of heaven, if this says that the river of God, the crystal river of revelation, of healing, of deliverance to the nations flows from the throne and is of the lamb, 
My question is, why not be a throne room company? Why not be a bridegroom groom company, a bride company that's obsessed with the Lamb of God, obsessed with Jesus, and obsessed with the throne? Look, instead of, you know, just trying to get a little sliver of an orphan kind of a thing of, I just need to get a little piece of that fruit or a little lap up of a sip of that water, why not just go right to the source, the spring source, the fountain of life, the Lamb of God, Jesus the beautiful one. He is the source of all life. He says that I am the resurrection and the life. He is the source, the fountainhead of all blessing and all wonder and beauty and revelation. He himself is and the throne room is. And there's a company, there's a company in the courts of heaven. There's the four living creatures, the 24 elders, innumerable angels. There are a council of Elohim that are around the throne of God. And I want to encourage you that you can live in that throne room place like Isaiah 6, like John in the book of Revelation, that we're called to be a throne room people that live from the throne room, looking at the Ancient of Days, gazing upon His beauty, singing holy, 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 getting lost in the beauty of His holiness joining in with the elders to cast down your crowns and all your crowns of achievement, whether in this life or even in ministry, throwing it all down is it com- doesn't even compare to his majesty that exudes from him. Look, in a, a Psalm 93, it describes the majesty of God, the wonderful majesty of God. And in this Psalm, It describes the majesty of God like waves crashing over and over again onto the shore. It's it's his might. It's his majesty. It's so wonderful. It's like wave after wave after wave washing over the shore, the sandy seashore. Look, he, in another passage, it says that in Psalm 45, it says that he's clothed in splendor and majesty like a robe. The Father, the Ancient of Days, the Lamb of God seated upon the throne. There's this exuding wave, water wave of majesty and splendor and might and holiness that he's robed in that flows like waves off of his body. And, and it fills the, the river. It flows out like, a, like the river, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of holiness flowing and unleashing the majesty and might and beauty of God to the nations of the earth. And that's why commonly, this is just a side thing, but that's why commonly when you're in a time of worship or a time of prayer, you'll feel it come in billows or in waves or in corporate settings. A lot of times in worship, there's waves where it'll come and ebb and flow in these waves and you get swept up into his majesty and into the river of God where minutes become hours and hours become days and you're swept up into this, the majesty and the wonder of him. Look, I want to be a river person. I'm all about the river. Jump in the river. Live in the river of God. Live in the Holy Spirit. Let's be a river people feasting upon him, drinking from him the the drunken glory joy that's available from the river of pleasure and the feasting and the abundance that's available, the satiation, the satisfaction that's available as we feast upon the house of God. The healing on all manner of manifestations. I love them all. All the manifestations of the Spirit of God in might and power and wonder. But I want to encourage you, just become a throne room person. Become a Jesus person. Get in the throne room. Live from the throne room. That's where you're seated, by the way. It says you have been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You're seated in the throne room. You're seated there like Isaiah 6. You're seated there like John. You're actually there right now with the Ancient of Days and the lightning and the thunders and and the wonderful crystal river that flows. So my encouragement to you is why not become a throne room person? Why not start to learn to live from there with your perspective, with your ears, with your eyes, with all your senses to engage with the throne room? Even read those passages to begin to imagine where you're actually placed in Christ. Begin to meditate and think upon, position your life in such a way where you live enamored by Jesus, where you live in love with his gospel and in love with him in his person, in his presence become a presence person, become a bride, become a lover, and watch and see as your life gets full of a river, your life becomes swept up, where you're not just visiting it every now and then and taking a little lap, or you're not just 
every now and then, you know, picking up a leaf and running away or picking up some fruit and then going and living, that you actually get to live floating in the river, in the deep end, just surrender all your life, all of him. You can have all of me. Take it all, Jesus. Have it all. Just have all of me. I want to go all the way in, not ankle deep, not you know waist deep. I just just submerge me. Let me get immersed, just floating down the river, drinking the river of the Spirit of God and feasting upon the trees and the abundance of heaven. So I'm going to be that person. It starts with being a throne room person. It starts with being obsessed with the Lamb of God. For all of time, heaven will wonder and wonders about the wonderful slain Lamb of God. He is ascended. He is resurrected. He is alive. But as it says in Revelation, his hair is white like wool. So forever, even in his ascended, resurrected, victorious state, he is forever marked is the slain lamb of God. His authority is always forever marked with that humility and that meekness of a lamb. All of heaven is always rejoicing. Why not do it now? Why not position your life to live in in the throne room and of the lamb and watch and see as you get swept up in the current of the river of his majesty and let the Holy Spirit take you wherever you want to go. Let's go for the ride, baby. Come on, it's fun. Let's go for the ride. It's an adventure. Woo, I love it. So hey, I want to encourage you. Let's be Let's be this. Let's do this. Let's walk in it. Live your life in the vortex of the throne and the lamb. All right, I want to encourage you to subscribe. Hit the button below uh, to follow along for more content like this. Also, like and comment. I want to hear from you. What do you think about? What, what are some ideas that come to your mind of being somebody who lives in the throne room, and it lives of the Lamb. What would it look like to be a person, a Jesus person, a throne room person? What would it look like to live swept up in the current of the Crystal River, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Holiness? Uh, Drop your comments. I want to hear from you. And also share this so that others can be encouraged by this as well. Thanks so much. I love you. I'll talk to you soon.